to pinkish to brownish. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult to get accurate counts and stuff like that. Wow. So when you get into relatively high density areas, like we're on a site now, so this is this is perhaps not a not the best example of what intensive track survey is like normally, but you can you can imagine that it's actually very difficult to keep track of all those things simultaneously. Right. Um, and that's that's partly why we didn't rely a whole lot on um, artifact counts, tile counts and so on in areas like this, but mm -hmm. did the best we could and obviously this somewhere like this would show up as super high density compared to areas around mm -hmm. that are the off site material. Mm -hmm. So then we would just declare them to be places of special interest and then we would come back with a team of people and map it all out and think the visibility and all of the um, different things and uh, the different uh, grab units which we generally try to do by vegetation type or by field type. Um, and so, the, you know, there'll be a separate grab collection taken from each of these units, mm -hmm. bagged separately so it can be studied separately so you got mm -hmm. some idea of the, um, the diachronic differential in terms of the spatial land of the site as a whole. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so that's one reason why this kind of intensive survey where you're mapping background levels of materials is so useful because you don't have to walk around and say, oh, we found a site, because often that's not clearly apparent mm -hmm. just on first encounter. Mm -hmm. All you can say is that there's more stuff here than we generally find. Precisely. We don't know the edges of it. We don't know its, you know, the dark right range of the material. We need to explore it in more detail. Mm -hmm. Make sure we've located every millstone, every cut block, every pipe fragment, and so on, and map them out. Mm -hmm. And we're clearly seeing a lot more <clears throat> of these cut fragments, especially along this uh, line that we walked here, yeah. being thrown out. Yeah. You even got more of your kiwi pipe over here which is actually thrown up on that terrace yeah. and there's a rogue yeah. kind of coming in so yeah. I think so they've thrown it all up on this yeah. terrace right here yeah you're yeah. right so we're actually standing right here yeah. where it says vines yeah. along this actually no we're along this line here that road comes in between and turns up so we're just along a terrace that continues here I think or at least not a terrace but definitely it's uh, been thrown up with material and uh, they've kind of formed a new line feature here New linear feature. And if I'm not mistaken, underneath that uh, that tree over there, you see a is that a cut stone? Just straight ahead, a piece of kiwi. Maybe about Maybe. cut stone. Yeah. Piece of chert. Hmm. Actually, actually a worked piece of chert. How about that? little side scraper. There's a chert flake that's been knocked mm -hmm. off this way and they've retouched this edge mm -hmm. around here to make a side scraper. This is the dominant kind of material for uh, lithics in this area. There's a whole range of um, different colored cherts with various kinds of uh, um, flaking properties and it's all coming out of the limestone. This is that's the limestone. Mm -hmm. Mountain up there, so a lot of stuff flows down the gorges and into the into the uh, the river bottom itself. So there's, there's a you know, good availability of raw material. It's kind of nice. Don't know what it's doing here in the middle of a Roman site. <laughs> it's a joyous survey. land disturbance having gone on, it's kind of encouraging to see that it's almost impossible to destroy the archaeological record <laughs> total edge of a tile, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a big jar and amphora handles, yes, Roman to medieval. Inside. 
interesting thing is, is how this site would be evaluated if a fresh team of surveyors were to come in here now mm -hmm. and uh, try and map it out in the same way and, and you know, examine differential surface distributions, whether it would wind up looking pretty much like this mm -hmm. in terms of the range of material and relative hot spots, you know, peaks and troughs of density and so on, or whether another quarter century of plowing and road cutting and field stone clearance has, has really changed the, um, the surface impression of the site. Mm -hmm. That would be, be an interesting exercise. It would be. I mean, we're simply revisiting and trying to figure out where we were 25 years ago and what's still to be seen, but to actually come back and do a, a systematic um, revisit that tries to do the same things in the same way would be interesting.